Part three. Part three. Part <laughs> your tree. Then. My tree like, Part three. is like this. Okay. My tree is like that. Oh, like that. <laughs> Part three. That. Part tree. 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 <laughs> Part three of our story. Uh, our marriage life and family life. Okay. So we wanted to refilm this because there was a few things we had missed in the last video that we had filmed for you. Now we're gonna talk about our engagement. So we had our engagement party in the uh, Philippines. We were engaged for four months. We were married the same year as 2014 of October but ang original plan namin was to get married in the Philippines but uh, the, we had two choices there's the spousal visa which would take about a year of processing and the fiance visa it was only three to six months so we did the fiance visa so we did the fiance visa kasi mas mabilis siya and we want to be together as soon as possible say a long distance relationship is not easy hindi siya madali sa mga naka-experience or currently in a di long distance relationship ngayon just keep the faith and you might not be with your loved ones right now but God has a plan and his timing is always perfect so I went to the Philippines during Joanna's interview at the embassy and went there for her interview and uh it was kind of an interesting experience being at the embassy. But after we went through all the process and Joanna was approved, then we spent a little time there at the Philippines. And then we had bought airplane tickets to fly back. And when we flew back to Idaho, we had some friends and uh, family waiting for us there at the Boise airport some really good friends. <laughs> so, uh, Kuya Dennis and Ate Lorna, I know that they watch our channel, so, kumusta? Kumusta? <laughs> I know you're watching! I know you're watching! <laughs> we applied for tourist visas for my parents. Uh, and the idea of uh, uh, applying for tourist visas for her mom and dad was so that way they could come and attend our wedding. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> We sent all the information to prove that they were coming for our wedding and they would be going back. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. didn't happen. Yeah, they got denied, so... And we had actually, because originally we had had our wedding set for about September. But then, we were because we were waiting to see if they would have been approved. And once they were approved, we were trying to get them over here so they could visit. But after they were denied... It's just kind of just sad feeling that they weren't able to be here for our wedding. So on the day of our wedding, my dad was walking around during our wedding with my iPad that I had got back in high school. And he was using it via Skype with her family back in the Philippines. So that way they could watch our mm -hmm. wedding. So we had someone ask us a question. Sabi niya, how did I accept my pass? Is that correct? So after no, when we were when we were dating, when we were courting, I told him about my story and all that I've been through. And sabi ni Tay sa akin after nung kunento ko sa kanya yung nangyari nga sa akin. Sabi niya, sana dumating ako sa buhay mo before all of that. Para hindi na daw nangyari sa akin yun. In English, sabi niya. So I told her after she had told me what she had went through. I had told her that I wish that I could have been there before all of that happened. But 
sometimes we God puts experiences in our lives that we may not understand at the time when we go through them but sometimes those things happen in our lives is what makes us stronger and so and wiser and wiser and knowledgeable about why our parents tell us why why our parents try to teach us what's right and what's wrong and growing up i know both me and joanna have had our rebellious stages in our life where we feel like we know what's best for ourselves but yet parents truly do know what's best for their children for the most part because there's always situations where we put ourselves in situations that we get ourselves into trouble and we need our parents there to help guide us through because most of the time parents have already gone through similar situations and they are there to teach us and train us to be aware of that kind of stuff so we need to listen thought, thought, thought of the day so on our first two years of our marriage we had um arguments and uh, misunderstandings Ty has always been the one that's always kind and understanding what are you more Ty has always been the one that's very understanding and siya yung nagsasorry first kahit na ako yung mali. God knows exactly what I needed in my life. After nung traumatic experience ko, I struggled with a lot of anxiety and depression. But God has been helping me recover and heal. One of the things that I told myself in the situations when we would have an argument disagreement, misunderstanding. I always told myself that I need to be on an understanding basis, whether I was right or whether I was wrong. I always told myself that first thing is I need to keep my feelings under control and not try to be angry or sad, but just try to keep my emotions under control because we both are learning to understand each other. And I know that if we both just get upset at each other and we don't communicate and don't really come together and say, maybe I'm sorry, it's a good way to start out, that Even it will be, it'll make things harder for our relationship. So the best thing to do is start out with just, whether if you're right, whether if you're wrong, just go up and say sorry. Because that is the best way to start it off. Because if you can both stop and think about from another perspective instead of just your own, which was one of the things that I tried to do in the situation, was to think from my wife's perspective so that way I have a better understanding of where she's coming from because then we can build our relationship together instead of trying to build it against each other because mm -hmm. marriage is a team team, team effort it? yeah marriage is a team effort effort and you gotta you gotta give up self and be more of a bunion. <laughs> I don't know. You gotta give up your selfish selfish desires and be think more of the other person. Try to out love each other in a sense. It's one of the counseling books that we both read and uh was to you we you need to out love the person that you're in your relationship with not not necessarily try to compete it comp you need to compete in, in loving each other but yet give that time to 
<laughs> so we have a few advices before getting married. And these are our tips. One. Zero. We got zero. We got four. Four tips. Um, one is talk about the financial. Financial stuffs. Like, I don't know. Uh, Your financial st status, status that you want to be in. Because those are one of the biggest things in marriages that break marriages up. Is people's finances. You've got people that are deep in debt and struggle to make payments and maybe not have a good job. Those are a very important thing in a marriage because you need to know what your financial status is, to know what your partner, especially what your partner, how he handles money. Mm -hmm. His attitude about money. His, His attitude, attitude, yes, His in handling attitude. money because if I he's someone who goes out and wastes money in places that are not that are outside of the family you need to reconsider you need to start considering your relationship for in the first two years of our marriage we had shared a phone for, for yeah for, we just for had years. one phone lang isa lang yung phone namin and Ty goes to work he has the phone and sometimes I would have the phone. Not me. So I could talk to my family. Not no. me. Oh, no, not me. Not me. Wala kang phone, no? Yes. Baby ka pa. Just girls and when you're old, you can have your phone. Mm -hmm. So we talk about that financial stuff before, well, when we were dating and... When we were dating, we were both thrifty in a sense on a lot of the things that we would buy and number two number two is uh you you need to talk about your beliefs you know so as a christian that's one of my standards is to date or court a christian man so this is just my opinion now ah, but because if you have different beliefs you are not spiritually aligned and equally yoked it can hurt your relationship. But the good news is you can pray for your spouse. You can pray for each other. But it is not your job to change him or her. It's the Lord's job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. That is one of the very important things to do as a couple is to sit down and study, talk about your beliefs, and then refer back to the Bible and see if it's a biblical belief. And this is if you're a Christian. And yeah, if you're a Christian. Uh, and those that are Christian, you know, we we base all our belief on what the Bible says. Okay, number three. You need to talk about your plans as a couple, as a married couple, if you want to start a family, to you know, have kids, how many kids you want to have. Just one. Just one? Yes. You don't want to have any more? Yes. Daddy and mommy wants more. Eh? You can have more. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have at least ten. Ten dollars. Oh no, that will be so lot! How about? How about? Twelve. <gasps> That's a long time. We'll just. How about three? Three long. We yes. can have three more. Okay, yes. we can pray to Jesus to give us three more. Okay, let's pray to Jesus. Oh. Lord Jesus, thank you for this birthday cake. If Lord asked you that we want a five three boys and thank you for that. Amen. <laughs> three boys. Amen. Three boys. <laughs> three boys. You wanna talk about what you have as far as plans for the future. Because you wanna be able to share those same feelings. You wanna know whether if you wanna have a family or not. Whether if you want to have lots of kids or few kids. You want to be able to talk about whether the spouses, who's going to work, who wants to work or someone wants to stay home. And of course, that was kind of a little bit of a conflict in, our, in the start of our marriage. 
was Joanna felt guilty that I was just doing all the work, but yet for her, it worked out to her advantage in the sense that I was able to work and provide for all our needs, and yet she was able to take all her time in teaching Harlan. Mm -hmm. Best job ever. And our last tip is to pray for each other. Pray for your relationship and ask God if getting married is His will for your life. So um, looking back through my life, you know, I was looking at all these careers, you know, architecture, and to be a flight attendant or to work on a cruise. And, and I just realized He's preparing me for this life, to be a homemaker, to be a housewife and a mother and I think that's why that opportunity came you know that uh, when I went to that all-girls school where I, gonna, I was trained to do housekeeping cooking baking and all that she's a good cook and so I have a stove too and I cook some strawberries and raspberries. Oh, you cook them. Oh. And then I cut some vegetables. And Shut up. I cook some up. tea and soup, and it's really, really yummy. Yummy. And see, not only that, with Joanna, you know, the Lord, you know, had a leading in for her, her calling as far as where, what kind of degree what kind of education she was needing and he also did the same for me because after graduating high school i was considering you know college where i wanted to go what i wanted to be i loved the work that i did from growing up doing hiking trails but i really had a strong passion for music and i was really considering being a music teacher or something in the teaching field, but I'm not that great of a teacher. But I could have completely went and became went to become a music teacher, accumulated lots of debt just going to college for that. Whereas growing up with the work that I have grown up with, I stuck with it and eventually bought into it and you know with the work I had I was able to provide all the money that was needed for our family and save up so that way we could grow truly the Lord has plans for each and every one of us and sabing us uh, Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in the future and that that verse it not, it's not just for us it's also for you if you're in that situation right now that you don't really know what you to do or you're in a position where you don't know where to go mm -hmm. stop and pray because it it helps because the lord definitely has plans that he can he'll lead you and show you in a way but you've got to also be open to listening yeah and it's his plans are better than ours and uh, <laughs> every time I look at me just a little bit see my Ganda. <laughs> Ganda. <laughs> yeah because because he knows us Prob probably yes. psalm 139 no, I, I know. I encourage you guys to read that. That's the my fer favorite chapter. chapter in the Bible, the Psalm one thirty nine. Basahin nyo. Basahin nyo. Basahin nyo. Basahin nyo. Basahin nyo. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Dios, kasi hindi niya ako pinabayaan. I'm very thankful that he gave me another chance in life, and kahit na. <laughs> kahit na ilang beses kahit na ilang beses akong nagkamali hindi siya tumigil sa pagmamahal sa akin you know? very thankful for that 
I'm thankful for a God that loves me and gave His only Son to die for my sins. And die for my sins. So I can be, so I can be a new creation. And the new creation is Jesus. The old has gone, the new has come. 2017. May 2017 was when our lives completely changed. Forever. Forever. That's when Harlan was born. Forever. And then Harlan. That's when you were born, May 2017. Mm -hmm, yeah. Having Harlan really changed our marriage because now that instead of thinking about each other, we had one more person we had to think about. <laughs> yeah. When you have your own child and you, every time you look at him, you see an almost the exact same thing of what yourself was when you were little and it's almost like in a sense payback <laughs> for the experiences you give in your own parents and i know i've seen a lot of myself in harlan growing up the temper the emotional dealings it it's helped us grow emotionally spiritually and physically in training harlan how to be <laughs> a tough boy and training him to be a for, child of christ for the glory of god for for his kingdom a light in a dark world after we had harlan when he was born it's just for me i think <clears throat> i became more mature I think. I think. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it helps us be more cautious in what we do because now we know that having a younger mind in our family, he's always watching us and what we do and what we say. And he learns those things. So as we as parents, we've learned that we need to be very careful in the things that we do say because... He's always watching us. We need to be a good example. And we need to be a good example for him. So that way he in return will be in a good example for others around him as he grows up. Okay, I think that's yeah. pretty good. I, really I think that's pretty good. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And then don't forget to remember that Jesus loves you and Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Amen. And then thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Don't for don't forget to subscribe and like. And push the bell. Push the bell, ding, 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 ding. Thank you for Thank watching you. our vlog.